What's up guys, I'm Dave Klein, aka Dave Control. The world of Elden Ring is absolutely massive, so there's a good chance there's something you might have missed, even if it's small. So here are 10 things you didn't know you could do in Elden Ring. For this episode, I'm going to focus on Limgrave as to avoid late game spoilers. Margit's Shackle. If you're struggling against the first major boss fight of Elden Ring, Margit the Fell Omen, fear not, for the game actually includes a handy way to make this boss fight easier. The way to do this is by purchasing Margit's Shackle. What is it? Well, shackles were used to bind the cursed people called the Omen, and these ones were made to keep a particular Omen under strictest confinement. Though faint, the shackles still retain vestiges of power, enough to trap the once bound Margit on Earth, if only for a short time. Once you get this shackle, use it against Margit and even other Omen creatures you may find, and it will shackle them momentarily, allowing you to wail in some hits. And you can use it multiple times, so don't worry about running out of uses. So where do you find this ever so useful item? Well, head to the Murkwater Cave. You can find this in between the Murkwater Catacombs and Aghiel Lake, right at this section of the map. You'll know you're close by when you get invaded by Bloody Finger Nerigus. Don't worry, Bloody Finger Hunter Yura will be there to help you through it. Enter the Murkwater Caves, open up the chest, and who should you find but none other than Patches. Yes, the very same patches that is in just about every recent From Software game. Once you get him to half health, he'll give up on the fight and act as a merchant. Rest at a site of grace and return to him, and you'll now be able to purchase the Margit Shackles from him for 5,000 runes. A steep price, but maybe not so steep when you consider just how useful this item can be. Bok the Seamster. It can be very easy to miss some NPCs in Elden Ring. In fact, some of them are even hidden as inanimate objects. One of these NPCs is Bok the Seamster, who you can find in a small forested area near the Aghiel Lake north site of Grace, or here on a map. Bok has been transformed into a tree, and you'll be clued in on his location by him calling out when you run by near Oi! him. You, you there. Could you help us out, Cully? And the only way to help him out, Cully, is by hurting him. No, seriously, you'll either need to swing at his tree with a weapon or roll into him to restore him to normal. Once you do this, Bach will thank you by gifting you a number of mushrooms and suggest his next location. My knees start knocking, just thinking about that god-awful cave on the shore. After this, you can find Bach in the coastal cave to the west side of Limgrave. He'll clue you in on the ganky nature of the dungeon's bosses, but defeat them and you'll find his prized sewing needle. You can give back to him and progress his quest line, where Bach will be able to alter certain items of your wardrobe for you. While this is essentially the same thing as the tailoring tools you'll also get for defeating the demi-human chief's boss fight, and that you can use without Bach at any site of grace, Bach will alter your wardrobe for you for free, whereas doing it at a site of grace will cost runes. Being a dick pays off. Getting high level equipment early on can be a little tough in Elden Ring. You may not meet the stat requirements, and the more and more you upgrade your weapons, the more and more expensive it is, with smithing stones that are harder to come by earlier on. However, there's a very, very quick and easy way to get a very good starting weapon, if you're willing to be a dick. Head to Castle Morn to the south, which is being besieged by menials. At the top of the castle, you can find the Warden of Castle Morn, Edgar whose daughter, Irina, you can find earlier on the way to Castle Morn. Edgar is doing his best to hold the line and keep the castle from being fully captured by the menials, while protecting their special weapon. I'm afraid Castle Morn won't hold much longer. Take this, by way of apology. But you know, Edgar, I feel like a failure to hold the line like this deserves to be severely punished. What's this about? I am a for killing Edgar, he'll drop a plus 8 halberd, which is pretty damn good at this point in the game, when you should be tackling Castle Morn. So hey, maybe being a dick does pay off. Nighttime Struggles Exploring the lands between at night can bring a host of new challenges. For example, if you explore the bridge just south of the Aghiel Lake north side of Grace at night, the Knight's Cavalry boss fight will appear. Similarly, the same thing can be said at the Castle Morn rampart side of Grace on the Weeping Peninsula. But these aren't the only unique things that will happen at night. For example, head back to the Church of Ella at night, you know, the same church where you find Kale the Merchant. If you do so after getting Torrent, you'll find the witch who calls herself Rena. Rena will then gift you the Spirit Calling Bell, which will allow you to summon Spirit Ashes, as well as some Lone Wolf Spirit Ashes. But that's not all. Head up to Stormhill, and you can find the Warmaster's Shack east of the Stormhill Shack Roderica likes to hang out in. 
Normally, you'll find Burnall at the Warmaster Shack, who's kind enough to teach you some weapon arts. However, head here at night, and Burnall will be missing. If he's not, rest at your Sight of Grace, again making sure it's night, and you'll find he's no longer there. Walk inside, and you'll be ambushed by none other than a bell-bearing hunter. He has a telekinetic sword, so have fun with that one. Roderica. Speaking of Roderica, you can find her in the Stormhill Shack, saddened because all of her buddies left to get grafted by Godric the Grafted. The Stormhill Shack is easy enough to find, as it's right on the path to Stormvale Castle. Speaking to Roderica here, she'll gift you Spirit Jellyfish Ashes, which are honestly pretty awesome. She also happens to be a very important NPC, and you continue her questline in one of two ways. The way that's probably technically the correct way would be by searching Stormvale Castle. Before you defeat Godric, which will progress her questline, you can find a grafted scion within the castle below the Rampart Tower site of Grace. You don't have to defeat him here, but what you do need to do is head to a side room near this, where you'll find a number of corpses piled up and a couple of dogs. On the pile of corpses, you'll find the Chrysalid's Memento. Bring this back to Roderica, and she'll head off to the Round Table Hold. Here at the Round Table Hold, Roderica will thank you for helping her out and gift you a Golden Seed. You're now free to continue her quest line. However, let's say you miss that, and she leaves before you can finish her quest. Fear not, as returning to Stormhill Shack, you can find some flowers she's left as well as a golden seed, and she'll still end up in the Round Table Hold. Like I said, she's an important NPC. Blythe, aka Guts. Blythe is the best. He's a giant wolf warrior who's pretty much just Guts from Berserk, but as a wolf, and I love him. He's also the wolf you may have seen in artwork during loading screens of the game, as well as one of the first trailers to the game. But finding him can actually be a little tricky, so here's what you need to do. Head east of Limgrave into Mistwood. It's the large forest just east of Limgrave. You can't miss it. In fact, if you're doing Patch's questline, he will transport you right into Mistwood with his chest trap. If you walk around the Mistwood ruins early in the game, you'll hear a howling noise. Not much you can do here yet, but return back to the Church of Ella and speak with Kale the Merchant. Now that you've heard the howling, you'll have a new line of dialogue you can get from Kale about it. Kale will teach you the Snap Gesture. Now return to Mistwood and the Mistwood Ruins. Use the Snap Gesture and you'll beckon Blythe to come down and speak to you. From here, you can continue on early parts of his questline. All of that said, if you missed this, don't worry, you can still do later parts of Blythe's questline later in the game. It's all good. You'll just miss the beginning of his questline. You can escape transporter traps. Something I brought up in the last point was the transporter trap that Patches sets for you. If you open that chest up, there's nothing you can do about it if you're getting transported to Mistwood. However, that said, there are many more transporter trap chests hidden throughout the lands between. And as it turns out, you can actually dodge away from these and are given a decent amount of time to react and get away before they ensnare you. To do so, it's actually pretty simple. When you open the trap, just roll backwards right after you open it, and after realizing it's a transporter trap, and boom, transportation avoided. But let's say you're curious about where it goes. You can still open the transporter trap again at any point, and it will still transport you to the same location as before. Stone Sword Keys. This one is just a bit of paying attention to details, but it's kind of fun. The Stone Sword Keys you get in the game can be used on imp statue locks that lock away hidden areas that typically contain good loot, or some horrendous boss you're going to have to fight. However, sometimes these imps take one Stone Sword Key, and other times they take two. The way to tell how many they'll take is simply by looking at the imp statue. All of them have two heads, but in many of them, there's already a stone sword key in the bottom head, which you can visually see. If there's a stone sword key already in one of them, which is honestly most of these, you'll only need one stone sword key to unlock the area. However, for the ones where there aren't any stone sword keys in the imp statue, that's when you know you'll need two of your stone sword keys. Stormvale Castle Skip Alright, so you made it to Stormvale and you're struggling. But you want to explore Liurnia, which is north of Stormvale Castle, and just have fun exploring more. Well, have no fear, for you can actually entirely bypass Stormvale Castle. From the Stormhill Shack site of Grace, instead of heading into Stormvale Castle, head straight north along the path that goes underneath the giant bridge, and to the destroyed bridge close to the water. Here, you'll find a Finger Reader NPC near the bridge. Don't worry about her, though. Just keep heading north along the destroyed bridge, and you'll discover that, even though it's destroyed, you can actually drop down along its remains and then hug the east side of Stormvale Castle. 
Continue north along this path and you'll eventually pop out right at Liurnia the Lakes and the lake facing cliff site of Grace. Hidden Stormvale Castle Tree Spirit Stormvale Castle has a massive hidden underneath dungeon area that you'll have to take a leap of faith to find. This dungeon includes many goodies and a minor boss. Remember the Tree Spirit boss I showed earlier that absolutely wrecked me? Well, you can find one here. However, most of the time defeating these Tree Spirits makes them drop a Golden Seed, so it's definitely worth fighting them as it'll add to your Golden Seed count. Not only will you find this Tree Spirit and Golden Seed for heading down here, but you'll also find a Stone Sword Key and the Prince of Death's Postule, which is a talisman you can equip that will raise your vitality. To find this area, start at the Liftside Chamber site of Grace within Stormvale Castle. Leave the open door that isn't locked and go around the side next to the right where you'll find a dead enemy looking down. Look down as well and you'll see a path you can fall on. Fall down here and then continue to work your way down. And there you go. Have fun fighting a tree spirit! I hope you learned something new, and if not, I'll have another video for you guys next week with even more fun fact toys and hidden things, so I hope you'll look forward to that and enjoy. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.